you. It's good to be here. So my name is Cecily and I am fat or obese for some of you who are uncomfortable, but I can say I'm fat because I am. So there are other things I can say about myself that um, you probably can't say as well. So um, I have always uh, believed that I was fat. Uh, my earliest memory was um, like I was still in footy pajamas and I asked my brothers, um, am I fat? And they were like, ah, oh, you're chubby, maybe, like, whatever. Um, so I don't know why when I was so young that that was something that came to my, to my mind and my life, but I have always believed this about myself. And um, as I've grown up, I've started to take that in as a, a form of shame and guilt and something's wrong with me. What's wrong, like why can I not be that? Why, what, what am I doing wrong? Where did I mess up to be this way? And so um, it really became more of an issue once I was in high school and that's when dieting and exercise and all the like things became more of an issue and I tried all the things throughout my life. Fast forward to uh, my late 20s, I started living. <laughs> um, I, my life has been kind of painted with a tint of gray. Um, there's watercolors all around here and I can kind of see like, um, if you imagine some of the brightest paintings but then putting like just a little gray watercolor over top of it, um, that's kind of how my life has mostly been. And in my late uh, 20s, I went, started going to therapy for other reasons. And apparently you go to therapy for other reasons and then find out why you're actually in therapy. <laughs> so during my time in therapy, I found, I realized that I was carrying a lot of shame and guilt and um, self-hatred and not really loving myself very well. Um, and it's a multitude of things. It's not just being fat, it's all the things. I live in America, what? <laughs> um, so through, through that time, I also started just being able to live and breathe and uh, do things. I started trying new things every year before my birthday. I would try something I'd never done before and or learn something or go somewhere I've never been. And uh, so through that time in the past five or six years, um, I'm 35, thank you. Um, through that time, I uh, just started realizing that I need to love myself however I am. So wherever I am, however I present myself, I need to love myself. Um, so I had just started kind of coming into, I'm good, I feel good about who I am, I feel good about uh, what I'm doing with my life, and I, uh, about a year ago, I went to the doctor, to the clinic to refill um, a prescription and they were like, um, we can't give you this prescription because you have high blood pressure. Your blood pressure is too high, we can't refill it, um, it's dangerous. Uh, so they're like, you need to get to a primary care as soon as possible. And I was like, kind of taken aback because I had been going to the doctor yearly for the past few years and they 
nobody said anything, nothing was wrong, and you know, everything seemed like okay. But here I am with high blood pressure, and I just started living. So that's just kind of a scary moment um, when you're like, oh, I kind of like life now. So I got on, uh, I got on blood pressure medicine, but I also was uh, like frustrated and was like, I don't want to stay on medicine. I don't want to be dependent on um, that life um, if I don't have to. So the basic thing that was given to me is lose weight, which is always a thing that people tell you and you're like, yeah, cool, thank you for that bit of information <laughs> that I never thought of ever. <laughs> so I, um, I was frustrated and I started at talking to my mom because I'm a millennial and I live with her, so um, it's a thing. <laughs> it's, just, it's, it's the way. Um, and I was just expressing to her that I, I don't want to live like this because I'm ready to go. And so I talked about having surgery and I was like, I just don't want to have surgery. Like that is the last thing that I want, but if I have to, I will. So we started doing searches and looking for um, other alternatives and we found one. And then I went to therapy again because I was like, Ugh, now I'm gonna lose weight and now like, I'm counterculture, like I'm countering what all the work I just did, like to get to love myself at this weight. Now I have to push that aside and lose weight. Um, but at the same time, like I want to live. So um, I went through the program and I lost enough weight to come off the medication. So. Um, yeah, thanks. <laughs> um, and it's still a journey, and I have to filter through people's comments um, about my body changing as if I am not Cecily, the person, as if my body is um, separate, but or as if my body is me. And so I have to let people know, like, I'm not trying to be, you know, whatever we've all known to be, the, the skinny white girl. I'm not trying to be her. Um, I won't be her for multiple reasons. <laughs> um, but it's always a struggle of, um, is this a compliment or are you just using your privilege of being able to say I've lost weight. Um, so I, um, I continue through my life. I'm able to live. Um, I'm still fat and I'm okay with it. I'm still, thank you. Um, I still um, am trying to live my life the best I know how. And finally there's a little tint of gray coming out more color coming up and so it's really like nice to um, nice to be able to live and so I feel like um, yes my name is Cecily and I am fat and but I'm 